Well, my name is Dan. I'm a former director of training for uh, First Aid Africa and I currently work for a Scottish Ambulance Service. Okay, so when we get called, oh my god, there's someone is uh, he's unconscious and they're not breathing. We get there and this person is on the floor, drunk, moving about, going, uh, uh, and then you ask, has anyone actually checked this person's breathing? Oh no. No, we have not done it. See, you know, before you say, when you call an ambulance, before you say, well, this person is not breathing, you should probably, you know, open an airway and, and here's the thing, actually check for breathing. Oh, now it's got another favorite one. Yeah, well, this person is serious hemorrhage. This person is bleeding all over the place. We are trying to control the hemorrhage. Well, well done for a status. I'm okay with that. So we rush across and often it's not someone that is really first aid trained though. It's someone that at some point has staggered about and gone, uh, yeah, I know first aid. Oh my God, this person is bleeding. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a tight tourniquet just up here to make absolutely certain that I cut off any sort of blood flow to this person's arm. Now, I can understand if that person's arm had blown off, if that's part of it completely chopped off. I give you that. Okay, no problems. But often, it's just a minor cut, you know, where a simple direct pressure on it would have sufficed. No, no, instead we turn up with people with belts around their arms, with uh, shoelaces around there, and uh, all sorts of other improvised tourniquets that, I have to say, luckily, did not really quite work as tourniquets either. So that's a double fail, really. Let's see, other pet heads, other pet heads, as I've got another good one, I've got another good one. Right, the, the classic unconscious person. The person is on the floor, right, very nicely on their back. And when we arrive, there's always sort of a bit of commotion, a bit of panicking around, goes, they're not well, they're not well. She, How are they not well? Well, they keep on going, <coughs> <coughs> like that, it's, it's almost, if they had to vomit, it's almost they're suffocating. Okay, so why didn't you want to just turn them on their side? Why well, didn't you want to touch them? Because... You know, what if I break their neck? I see, well, you know, like this, they're gonna suffocate and they're gonna die. You know, oh, get me wrong, they're gonna have a perfectly straight spine, but they're gonna die. No one is asking for a perfect recovery position, but at least a little effort on their side, you know, that would be nice. Another, another one is uh, for birds, right? Well, I've been trying to put this cream on for hours and it's just the burning sensation is not going away. I see. So you've been trying to put this oil-based substance on something that is really hot just now and you keep rubbing on it and the pain is not going away. Is that, is that, is that what they're saying? But am, am I being that patronizing to them? But of course no. We try to keep professional. We tell them, it's okay what you've done. It's not a problem. You know what? It's not okay. You know, it, it is a problem. It's, 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 it's not cool. Not cool at all. You know what I mean? The only thing that needs to be cool there is the burn. You know, and how you do that is by putting it under cool running water for a minimum of 10 minutes. Go on one, a little bit on, a little bit more on the, on the dark side, a little bit more uh, uh, dramatic one. When the, the person is actually not breathing, and I mean you checked that, because believe me, we've seen people, you know, receiving CPR while asking the person, please stop doing that. And the first aider said, no, I need to do this. <laughs> I've been taught that in my first aid course. All right. Anyway, but if the person is actually not breathing and do require CPR, if you're gonna do it, I mean, go for it. Oh, just, just a little bit, not too hard, not too hard, and make sure that we don't push too far. What are you doing? You're gonna do chest compressions. You go, oh yeah, but Dan, a little bit of CPR is better than no CPR at all. Well, you know what, I disagree. A little bit of CPR does absolutely nothing at all. If you're gonna push, you're gonna push hard. You're gonna push fast, you know? You wanna squeeze that heart. You wanna profuse that brain. You know what I mean? Otherwise, there's not really much point of you doing so. And the question comes, what if I break a rib? You know what, Matt? You want my answer? If you break a rib, you're probably doing it right. Okay? Oh, but if you break a rib, you can puncture a lung. Well, I tell you what, in the fantastic circumstance where a rib breaks, breaks off, turns around and does puncture a lung, guess what? You've got to. What saves a life is the bystander first aider that gets stuck on in there 
and starts providing chest compressions straight away. You're gonna crack a rib, good job, keep going, all right? We're just gonna take over later on and keep cracking ribs until this person hopefully survives. And uh, that's five, I think. Those are my uh, five pet hates. Awesome. I reckon. Thank you very much for watching this video and if you want to know any more about the great work that First Aid Africa is doing in uh, Southern and Eastern Africa, please check out our website on uh, www.firstaidafrica.org.